Alrighty folks, this is Shane. You're listening to the Asphalt TAR 20G amplifier head from Vailton. This is an analog 20 watt amp that's class D in the power section. Let's check it out. Being that the amplifier is all analog, it couldn't be more simple. We have a gain control and a master volume control as well as a digital spring reverb, which really sounds great. We have a three band EQ. On the back, we also get an effects loop and you're listening to that with the Dapper Indie going into the back, which is just running some analog delay. And it also works with eight and 16 ohm speaker outputs. Pretty cool, we get an auxiliary in. We also get a headphone output. A huge thanks to Bailton for setting this out. I really appreciate it. If you wanna find out more about them, all the links will be on screen. Let's get into it. All right, let's get into it today. I've got the amplifier going through my Marshall 2x12 box and it's loaded with 70, 80 speakers from Celestion. I've got it mic'd up with a Rode M3 and a Superlux ribbon microphone. We're gonna start with some clean tones. We'll go over to some crunchy blues tones and then wind the gain up. We'll try it with a few different guitars as well. So let's start with neck and middle pickup on this Stratocaster, going for a clean or almost off clean sort of tone with a gain most of the way down at about nine o'clock. So here we go. <laughs> Over to bridge and middle. Now over to the Harley Benton TE52 Telecaster loaded with two single coil pickups. I've just turned the high end a little bit down on the amp now. This is neck pickup. Over to bridge pickup. I think I changed from A to E there, but it doesn't matter. You get the point, nice and snappy. You can definitely get those tally tones. Cool. Let's try some humbuckers now, thanks to this artist ES335 style guitar. This is neck pickup, and I've got the treble back up just a hair on the amp. Here we go. And now over to bridge pickup, everything all the way up. Let's just try some of that single note stuff on the neck. Yeah. And now with the gain and drive both at one o'clock on the amplifier, let's give this a shot. This is neck pickup to start with.
over to bridge. Let's give this a go. <laughs> Now back to the Fender Strat with exactly the same settings on the amplifier except now I'm running some analog delay in the effects loop thanks to the Dapper Indie pedal. Here we go. <laughs> Volume control down. Cleans up nicely, back up. Yeah. And back to the ES335 on bridge pickup. Oh yeah, no pedals, no overdrive pedals. Pretty cool, but let's test it clean now with an overdrive. And now with some overdrive, thanks to the Delta Lab T01, I've got the gain on the amplifier set to about nine o'clock, which is in the clean zone. And I've also got the volume of the amplifier up at about one o'clock. So let's give this a shot on bridge pickup. I'm gonna play some heavy handed chords. It may clip a little bit. <laughs> Now with some overdrive. Whew. All right. Thanks for watching folks, my name's Shane. If you lasted this long, please give the video the thumbs up. I'm gonna give you some of my final thoughts on this amplifier. So in terms of tone, I like it a lot. It sounds good clean. It sounds good off clean for that sort of bluesy sound. And I really like the rock and gain tones on it as well. And it also sounds good with an overdrive pushing the front end, which is also a cool thing. Being that it's analog, it handles pedals extremely well, minus the digital reverb. But the digital reverb itself sounds great. I left it in the same spot the whole video. Hopefully you like the sound of that. Everyone likes different amounts of reverb obviously as well, but that's kind of where I liked it in the room for what I thought I was hearing. So overall, tone wise, it's pretty good. One of the criticisms I have about it is the power cable. It's about this long past the actual power pack. So you, it's about a meter. It should have been much, much longer than that. It's just way too short. I know they had to have the power supply external to the unit being that it's so small but the cable is just too short. I'll show you some B-roll on screen of how that looks and see if you get a laugh out of it as well. As soon as I saw it, I was like, what are they thinking with this power cable? But it's all packaged nice and it all fit perfectly in the box, all that kind of stuff. So presentation wise, when you get it, they look really, really great. Now, another small criticism I have that I'm actually recording it as I speak right now is if I've got the amp at idle anywhere on the volume and I'm not playing, you hear this. Now I've enhanced that in post so you can hear it more, but if you're close to the speaker, you'll hear that even at the volume, even at, I can hear it as I talk. As soon as you start playing though, you don't hear it. It's something to do with the Class D power amp, I'm pretty sure, I don't know if they all do it. I've emailed the company, I didn't get a response, so I figure I'm gonna include that in the video as well, just in case you buy one of these and you expect it to be dead quiet. The one thing that I hear is less white noise from the speaker than the digital noise. So I don't really hear a lot of hiss from the amp. There's a little bit there, but I'm hearing more of that digital noise. But as soon as you start playing, it goes away. So I, I don't know what the circuitry is or what it does, but it's something worth mentioning, not a deal breaker. I think the amp still sounds really cool. Now, in terms of the build quality of the amp, as you can see, I've got it sitting on top of my Marshall box right now. 
And that's one thing that would panic me with some of the other Class D amplifiers. They're usually pretty light and it would be really easy for me to forget I'm, you know, I've got my guitar plugged in or if I'm not looking, you could easily pull some of these smaller amps off the front of the actual speaker box. This feels like it's got a bit of weight to it and I'm sure I'd feel the tension before it just flying off like some of those tiny Vox amps. You know, they might sound good, but they're so light, I would just be too paranoid about accidentally sort of ripping one of them off the top of the amplifier. So in terms of weight, I think they've got it nailed. All the pots feel great as well. And like I said, the gain stage on the actual amp feels good to play. It just, it feels good. It's got way more than enough top end, way more than enough lows and mids to suit your needs as well. I kind of found a sweet spot on the bass and, and mids at about 12 to one o'clock. Nice and simple. And then the top end can be just changed depending on your guitar. I didn't all, all of a sudden think, oh no, I need to change everything when I swap guitars, which is a good sign as well. I think most good amps, you can just plug in and make any guitar sound good, but that's just my thoughts. Thanks again for watching, folks. If you want to find out more about this amplifier, I'll leave all the links on screen and in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you soon. See ya.